Economics for a long time has not been the study of the economy. Economics has been the study of a method that was pioneered by the so-called marginalist theoreticians at the end of the 19th century. And the application of that method to subjects that don't appear to be economic at all is regarded as economics. Uh, and the study of the economy by some other widely different method, for example, the writings of the German social theorist Max Weber about the economy are not regarded as economics. Mm -hmm. So it is primarily the study of a particular method, the nature and consequences of which I hope we'll explore in the course of our conversation. What is important to understand is uh, how economics exemplifies in a particular way the situation of contemporary social thought. If we examine the whole field of social and historical study, we see that there are three main tendencies in command. In the uh, positive social sciences, including economics. What is in command is the rationalizing impulse, the attempt to explain the established arrangements as natural, necessary, or superior. In the history of philosophy, we would call this right-wing Hegelianism. The real is rational. Uh, in the normative disciplines of political philosophy and legal theory, what prevails is the humanizing impulse, the attempt to place a pseudo-philosophical gloss on the homely arrangements of mid-20th century social democracy and social liberalism, and to improve them by the management of the economy and by compensatory redistribution through tax and transfer on the one hand, and by the idealization of law in the vocabulary of impersonal policy and principle on the other hand. So the two disciplines of power, uh, the, the, the two normative disciplines are mainly occupied in this humanizing project. And in the humanities, what prevails is escapism. Consciousness embarks on a roller coaster of subjectivist adventurism, disconnected from the imagination and reconstruction of society. The representatives of these three tendencies, the rationalizing, the humanizing, and the escapist, pretend to be adversaries, but they are in fact allies in the disarmament of the transformative will and the transformative imagination. So the, the fundamental characteristic that all of these impulses have in common is the suppression of structural understanding and of the imagination of structural alternatives. We think in science, in natural science, that to understand the phenomenon is to understand what it can become. But it is precisely this transformative insight that is suppressed in the contemporary disciplines. So if we go back to the rationalizing impulse and the positive social sciences, uh, what we find is that each of them severs the vital link between insight into the actual and imagination of the adjacent possible in a different way. It's the way that Tolstoy describes family life at the beginning of Anna Karenina. All happy families are alike, but each unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. And the unhappiness of the social sciences is their prostration and their uh, their aversion from transformative insight, this connection 
between the real and the possible. Economics is the best organized in the social sciences and the most influential. And it, it, it produces this effect of retrospective rationalization in a very distinctive way. 